So if you are a spiritually minded person, you are all the time looking for service to others, not expecting anything from them, but doing it for the Lord. And the more and more you do it, you will find even strangers coming in your life with the anointing and coming to solve your problem. But what is the flesh saying? First let my problem get solved and then I will come to solve your problem. That's what the flesh says. What does the spirit say? My problem I am handed over to Jesus and now Jesus has anointed me to go and solve somebody's problem and as I am doing that, God has already chosen somebody who is supposed to come and solve my problem. So I'm not more interested in how I'm going to solve my problem. I'm more interested in how I'm going to use this anointing to bring more profit in the kingdom of God. Now you will be walking in complete liberty. Otherwise you will be all the time in your carnal thinking, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to get out of this problem? And you will be thinking, if I fast more, I'll come out more quickly. Mm-hmm. If you are spiritually minded, you will surely come out of it. You are carnally minded, you are going to get deeper into it. Everybody became silent, Lord, what, what happened? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I'm standing here before you 15 years with this experience and I'm telling you, I really, really live like I'm living in heaven. And I'm seeing that happen again and again and again and again and again. You mean to say, brother, you got no problems? Eh, I got problems. But I refuse to focus on my problems. I focus on what God said in his word. You know, sometimes I keep saying to God, sometimes, you know, I, f I say, Lord, thank you for this grace that you have given me. You know, my dates are fixed from uh, now for the next year till December. I have to give them the dates. Sri Lanka, Kuwait, Dubai, I have to give them the dates. Why I don't have my personal life? Can you give your date for the whole year? But they expect from me. And when I have given those dates, what am I supposed to do? I have to be committed. Now is it easy? I remember I was supposed to go to Nagar Koil and it was already fixed. And on the third day of the retreat, my daughter was supposed to fly to US. And the retreats were already done. And I, and I went there, I preached the first day. And the second day, somebody came to know that my daughter is going to fly the third day. They had a meeting in private and they said, listen brother, on the second day of the retreat, night, we have booked a, a bus for you. You go back home and see that you are able to be with your daughter. God saw my heart. There is always a sacrifice involved. But praise be to God. And, and when I told my baby, listen baby I won't be able to do, be with you. Is it okay? Dad, by you going there, so many people's lives are going to be changed. No problem, just go there. It's, it's always a sacrifice and it's going to bring result. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Change the slide, brother. Now, there is always going to be a competition in our life. And the competition is not going to be with somebody else, but the competition is going to be between your soul and your spirit. Your born again spirit and the soul. What's your soul? Your soul is your five senses, your will, your emotions, your desires, praise God. And, and what's your spirit? Your spirit is the real you, where God is dwelling in you. Now this spirit of yours was corrupted till you made a choice and made Jesus the Lord of your life and you got born again. The born again spirit has been made by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. It is a gift from God. Let me show you. 2 Corinthians 5. Okay, okay, give me 16. 
interesting verse and i and i pray that you will believe what you are reading please read give me 15 because it's therefore jesus died for all do you believe okay jesus died for all that they which live should no, not henceforth live unto whom are you living for hello did jesus died for all does that include you yes so according to the word of god the people who believe that jesus died for them they should no longer live for whom themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again so now you are living for whom jesus therefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yet though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more very interesting praise god now saint paul is saying saint paul is saying listen jesus died for all agreed and he died for all so that all of us could be saved now the person who has made jesus the lord of his life he is he has given his life to jesus and saying lord jesus from now on i don't live my life for myself i live for you in other words i take orders from you and then saint paul is saying listen he is saying that i have never seen jesus in my life hello saint paul had no encounter with physical jesus the disciples had agreed come on agreed were they living with jesus did they see jesus come on did saint paul get any opportunity to be with jesus no how did saint paul meet jesus in the flesh or in the spirit in the spirit when he encountered jesus in the spirit after that day saint paul got born again did he get so much of revelation from jesus in the spirit that he could write so much so many letters many a times many a times you might be saying if only i had to meet jesus in the body when he was physically alive my faith would have been rocket high okay but what is saint paul saying saint paul is saying from the time i met him in the spirit i no longer know him in the flesh i know him in the spirit and that same jesus who is in the spirit gave me all this revelation that even those who were with him physically did not get in other words he is saying the jesus in the spirit is more real than the one in the flesh and that's why i no longer know him in the flesh but i know him in the spirit and now that i i'm now now that i'm connected in the spiritual not in the physical he gives the next line and he says therefore if anyone is in christ in other words therefore if anyone is believing in that jesus not in the physical but in the spiritual such a person is a new creation i are, are you getting it because if you are saying hey i want to see the real jesus physical jesus he is saying if you are waiting for that you will not see that but you can see that same jesus using the scriptures and believing what is given in the scriptures and that's why he says therefore the one who is in christ jesus he is a new creature the old has passed away and behold all things have become new now behold all things have become new is where in your spirit your spirit has become new your spirit was corrupted my friend when adam committed sin our spirit was corrupted and because our spirit was corrupted the corrupted spirit thought or was teaching the soul to rebel against god and this soul has been trained for years in the flesh praise god 
So the change that took place in our life when we received Jesus, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, and we believed that Jesus in the spirit, we got born again. The change that took place was only in the spirit, not in the soul. And this change in the spirit was not our doing, it was God's doing. And therefore he says, all these things that have happened to us in the spirit are of God. Who has what? Reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. My friend, everyone who says, I, uh, Jesus is my Lord, God and Savior, such a person has a ministry of reconciliation. What's the ministry of reconciliation? The ministry of reconciliation is just the same that somebody came and preached the gospel to you and said, my friend, you have been a sinner. You have gone away from God. Now's the time God is calling you. He wants to, he loves you. He wants to wash you. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you a future. Come back and led you into repentance and led you to the cross where you gave your life to Jesus. That that is done by somebody in your life and that same ministry God is giving to you. If the apostles had not taken the ministry of reconciliation after Jesus' resurrection, would the gospel be alive today? And how many of us know that we have the ministry of reconciliation? We want Jesus to come and we want Jesus to come and bless us. You know what is our testimony? Our testimony is this. Hey brother, I had cancer and I got healed. Hey brother, my, job, my, my daughter was jobless and she got a job. Hey, my son wanted to get married and he got married. Hey, I wanted uh, to build a house and I, got build, I built a house. And how many people come and testify? Hey brother, God has given me the ministry of reconciliation. There was a person who was dying. I led him to Christ and he received Christ. All our testimonies are testimonies of blessings in material things and nothing of the spiritual things. Is it true? And what's your ministry? If all of you are born again and all of us are a new creation, then God is saying, listen child, I've done my part and I've changed your spirit. In your spirit lives the Holy Spirit. The greatest power in the universe is in you. I have not only washed you clean, now I trust you so much that just as I was with Jesus reconciling the people who had got lost through my son to come back and, and build that relationship back again, that same ministry that I gave my son and through my son to the disciples, I have given you the same ministry of reconciliation. But do we do that? Because on the last day, we will all be standing before him. And that day, he's going to ans ask you a question. I sent preachers after preachers to teach you the word. I gave you good health. I gave you the resources. I gave you the job. I gave you everything. Now tell me, let's settle some accounts with you. How many souls did you win for me? Or are you going to be the, the, the servant who was given the talent and he hid the talent and, and when the owner came, he gave back the talent and did not multiply? My friend, our selfishness for the blessings of material things are destroying so many souls who are going to hell because of our selfishness. And every time we come and say, many a times I say, God, my business was going on so fine. And if I had not to close down and, and do this work, I would have been standing here in some place and testifying and saying, hey, God has blessed me with two factories. Now I got four and so much of money. And God has been blessing me and blessing me and blessing me. And everybody would have been clapping. But how many souls would have lost with that bargain? 
Satan would have kept me busy with earning more and more money and counting the money. And he would have kept me busy and said, God is the blessing you, son. God is blessing you. God is blessing you. God is blessing you. At the same time, how many souls are dying because I refuse to go out and share what God has called me for? What's my testimony, my friend? If today you are sitting here, what have you come for? Some blessing that you want in your material things? Or have you come here and said, God, I thank you so much. I was destined to go to hell. But thank God you sent a stranger in my life who preached the gospel. And thank God for that person who preached the gospel. Because that person said yes to you, Lord, I can make it to heaven because of that person. And we have been so selfish after receiving our salvation. We can see there are so many people dying and yet we have no time to go and share the good news. But we want to get more and more kiddies. Hey, you're not taking kiddies to heaven, my friend. Can we see, when we look at the Bible, can we see how fleshy we are? How much carnal we are. And all that will come out of our mouth is, you know, this house God blessed me. This one God blessed me. Yes, God blessed you with all those things. And what did you give to God? Praise God. Why am I speaking all this? You know, for me, the greatest joy is, I met a mother just now, and she spoke about her son and how her son, who had failed, who had attempted suicide, and this mother was crying back in the ch son in India, and she spoke to me and she said, Brother, the prayers that you taught me, I began to speak it, I began to teach my son. I've got news to tell you, brother. He has cleared all his papers and he's doing so fine and he's come back to the Lord. Mera kuwait ka paisa wasul. The son, a grown-up son, who wanted to commit suicide, even attempted. What must be happening to the mother with all a life struggle finds that the son could not have success in life, a life of failure, and he goes and commits suicide. But thanks be to God, the gospel that was preached to the mother, she began to understand how to receive the gospel and use that gospel so that her son could be saved. What if I have to ask the mother, hey, your son got saved. How many other mothers are you going and sharing the same gospel? Might be you don't know to preach, doesn't matter. There are so many DVDs which are distributed. Can you make that commitment? Lord, I'll pick up these DVDs and go and find some people who are really crying in the church. And if they don't have the, the, the resources, let me use some money, Lord, and buy for them an MP3, put, put load that CD into them and give them and say, come on, I want, I'm going to come and meet you every week. Can you listen to this word and I want, I'm going to pray with you, I'm going to be with you, come on, let's do it. That's called Jesus' love. Not the testimonies that God gave me a promotion. God gave you a promotion for what? So that you can use his resources to establish his kingdom, not your kingdom. Praise God. Are you annoyed with me? I'm, I'm pouring out my heart. You know what is my heart? If I come here and I share this good news, I want you to go and share. Might be one person in a month or two people in a month. But go and get somebody into the kingdom, man. And you know the good news? When you go and share your testimony, it might be you don't know to preach, it doesn't matter. The good news is even if you don't know to preach, praise God, go and share what the Lord has done.
Just share your testimony and show them what scriptures have set you free. And make that prayer on that same scripture and say, God, I preach the gospel to this person. Now do something so that this person will, uh, mind and heart will be changed. And you will be amazed by the result because the Bible says that he has given you the re ministry of reconciliation. Means what? When he is sending you out, he is sending you equipped. If you work for the company, the company promises you the backup. If I call these brothers over here about knee problem, praise God, I've got a backup from God saying, son, you call, I'll back you up. If you ask me, God, I, I, if you ask me, have you really seen the Holy Spirit? I've never seen a vision. But I have got his word that says, son, when you stand in my name, I will back you up. Did he back me up? Praise God. That's how our relationship is all about. Read it. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Look at God, how much he loves us. He's saying, listen, even if you have done the worst of the worst sin, I do not count those uh, sins anymore. I, the punishment that was due on you, I have nailed it on the cross through my son Jesus. Every legal thing that was against you, I have nailed it on the cross for you. I set you free. Now that you have received the freedom, I have also given you my word of reconciliation. Can you now, I have I've set you free from so much, no? Can you do one small thing for me? Can you carry the word of reconciliation to somebody who is in trouble just like you and share with that person that same God who has had mercy on you is, is ready to have mercy on that person. Our Christian life is a life of selfishness, carnal thinking. What can I get from God? Praise God. Hallelujah. Then, next one. Now then we are now then we are, when you lose your passport here in Kuwait, where do you go? When you are in trouble, where do you go? Embassy or what? Which, which country? India. Why? He is here representing the country to help you. And God is saying, I have anointed you. Your sin I have cancelled. Look at God how much he loves us. He's saying, you are re my representative on this planet earth. And when you open your mouth and you speak the gospel, I'm going to issue the passport and the visa that person needs. The ticket, you can't issue. That's God's timing to issue the ticket. Somebody issued me the passport and the visa 15 years back of heaven when the gospel was preached. Thank God for that ambassador. Thank God for that priest. Come on ambassadors, it's time for us to go and issue some passports and visas because there are people who are dying and destined to go to hell but praise be to God, because of you they can make it to heaven. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you Christ instead that be reconciled to God. God is with you. Hallelujah. And look at the last one. For he has made him to be sin for us. Jesus who knew no sin. He took our sin and put it on his son Jesus. And made him a sin. And he took his righteousness, his nature, his blessing, his all the goodness. He took it and put it in us so that we can enjoy that inheritance. And this what he did is not only for us but for every person. And that person will receive only if you go and tell him. Otherwise the person will be in carnal thinking. A person can experience things of God only if he is spiritually thinking. And spiritual thinking comes through the knowledge of God. Unless the gospel is preached, no person will come to know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you annoyed with me? Hmm? So, 
today's message are you going to put it into practice hallelujah you know what is my desire years back i made a desire and i said lord when i go up to heaven i want lakhs and lakhs of souls waiting there for me to come and saying hey good brother thank you for coming into my life and preaching the gospel you preached and i received and i could make it to heaven and when you go up there there's nobody waiting for you praise god and remember kids are not there in heaven i did not get an increase in my salary doesn't matter can you get some souls for the kingdom a promotion in life is what how much more kids a promotion in life is how many more souls lord sister cynthia was sharing with me and she said there's a person who was who works in the house what do you say that maid so they can't come so she gave her the cd and this lady saw that a boss the kuwaiti lady was having cancer and she said listen i i i i i've got a cd if you don't mind and it's of jesus can you just watch it and she began to hear the preaching of the gospel accepted christ and she said thank you jesus by your wounds i'm healed and this lady is healed of cancer a a local kuwaiti lady now the maid uska to paisa vasool might be she must have not got any kd but praise god she could get the kuwaiti lady into heaven i was so happy pura dvd ka pura paisa vasool put the slide so how does a person walk into the flesh every work of the flesh as well as every fruit of the spirit it always begins with a thought my friend your thought if you have to scan your thought be vigilant in your thought life do not allow carnal thinking to have a hold on you because if you want to go and commit a sin it will all begin with a thought if you want the spirit of god to manifest in your life it will also begin with a thought for example i was preaching and all of a sudden i said okay all those who got pain come out it was a thought spoke it out the manifestation came has ever anybody committed a sin without first thinking let me take your picture and put it on the website you cannot commit sin without first thinking hallelujah and now when those thought thoughts are coming and coming and coming and coming and you are fighting and you are fighting and you are fighting and let's say you made a decision and you went into action the moment you went into action can you now stop can you now stop you can't stop it because you find a force that is taken over in the same way when you are thinking on god's word and god's word and god's word and god's word and you move into action now you can't stop because the power of the spirit of god is also taken over it works the same so if you want to see manifestation in your life check out what kind of thoughts do i have carnal or spiritual carnal destruction spiritual a rich harvest praise god 